Have you ever seen a piece of equipment that you thought might come in handy, might make your life a little bit easier, but you just weren't sure and you're not sure you really wanted to spend the money on it? Well, I've been thinking for a long time it would be great to have a camera boom arm, something that would allow for overhead shots in varying places. The magic arms and the pipes that I've got overhead in the shop help for general shots, but they aren't real adaptable. They're kind of specific to one area, and you'd have to have pipes running all over the shop to clamp those things to. So something that mounts to a tripod would be wonderful. But would it really be as wonderful as I think it is? It's kind of hard to say. So I thought I would try to mock that up without spending any money. And the good news is that I think what I came up with is as good or better than most of the products being sold out there. And that's this setup that I've got right here behind me. And let's take a look at how I did this. So here then is the heart of the system. It is really a tripod and a monopod. And in this case, I'm using the iFootage Gazelle tripod and the iFootage Cobra monopod. I really like their stuff, but it really isn't critical. Any tripod, any monopod should be able to pull this off. What really makes it possible is one of these super clamps from Manfrotto. And then there again, other people make the super clamps. And I have this fit with a quick release plate that goes to the head on the tripod. There again, it just depends on the tripod whether you need that or not. And these super clamps have a quarter 20 screw in the bottom, so you've got a place to put this. And that allows you to clamp this to the monopod once it's on the tripod head. I wouldn't clamp it too tight. You could theoretically crush your monopod depending on what kind of quality you have. I think this one would take quite a bit before I'd crush it. But that then is the basic system and that what allows you to mount the monopod as a boom arm. On the end of the monopod I put a ball head. The ball head allows me to change the angle of the camera so it's not just at 90 degrees to the monopod. But for a lot of things, that would work fine. And then, of course, there's a quick release plate on the camera, and it then goes on the, the top of the, the little ball head there. And the iPad can be used as a remote. Most new cameras have an app and wireless control that you can go to an iPad or an iPhone for a remote monitor. So if the camera is up overhead, you don't have to be able to see the camera screen. So this really goes together quite simply. The clamp goes on the top of the tripod. You want to make sure you clamp your quick release plate down. This is probably the weak part in the system is that quick release plate to the, the clamp is not always a secure connection. Perhaps somebody makes a better option that just does this part of it, but I haven't found it yet. Then I like to clamp the monopod just short of the first slider the first sliding section, and that way I can release that clamp and I can extend this a little bit further. I don't think you want to extend it too far or it gets a little top heavy and depending on your tripod that might be a problem. And also depending upon the tripod head, that could overpower the head even though you've got it locked. At some point there's enough leverage on that to create an issue. But that's really all it takes to set this up. You can extend the back end if you need a handle on it for for panning or tilting or whatever it is you want to do with it. And then the camera just mounts up here to the, the ball head. And by using the ball head, you can change the, the way the camera points and, and get it aiming at just what you want to aim it at. And that's pretty much the entire system. It isn't rock solid. It's got a little wobble in it. And that's the downside to the way this is all set up. And perhaps one that was designed for this would work better. But a lot of the ones that I've seen online just don't have the extendability, they don't have the adjustability, they don't pan and pivot like this does because they aren't connected to a regular tripod head, they're just connected to the top of the tripod. So there are a lot of things I like about this better. Now what good is it? What am I going to use this for? Now perhaps the ideal place to use this is taking straight down shots for either product photography or those short little video clips I put at the end of some of the blacksmithing videos. And again, by using the, the iPad, 
I can see what the camera sees. I can see if it's in focus. It makes a nice little remote monitor, although it's not perfect, and maybe I'll talk about that in another video. I can also then, either for video or photographs, trigger the camera from the iPad so I don't have to jostle this. And over here I've got a little turntable so I can turn the piece around and hopefully we can get a nice little shot with a little bit of movement to make it a little bit better. And like I say, this will work for either photographs or for videos. It works either way. Photographs stationary is all you really need, but for videos it might be nice to be able to move it just a little bit. And just being able to tilt it and move it in and maybe pan a little bit might result in an interesting effect. It's hard to say for sure. I still need to experiment to see what all the options are with this. Now this would also be good for some panning shots of the, the shop or the work that's being done. And if you have a person to run the camera for you while you're working, this would be excellent for getting some really good shots of what's happening at the anvil when I'm doing blacksmithing videos. I don't know that I'll ever get used for that because I never actually have a camera person in the shop, but there is that option if that ever happens. For the most part, I just think this opens some doors and adds some possibilities, and it didn't cost me anything over and above what I had already spent on equipment that I never thought I would use in this manner. Now, it seems to me that this should have some practical application for doing outdoor photography, and perhaps this isn't the best setting to try this out, but it happens to be where I'm at at the time. But this one gives us a nice elevated shot. And if we move smoothly, it can get us a nice pan shot. But I think the applications for something like this are really limited more to my imagination, or your imagination as the case may be, than it is the setup. There are some things that could be a little bit better. So iFootage, if you're listening, making a tripod head that is designed just to hold your monopod would be an outstanding way to go with this because then everything would work better and it would eliminate that little bit of a wobble that you get right in here. But in any case, I hope you enjoy taking a look at my kind of makeshift camera boom arm made out of the tripod and the monopod. I think it's gonna work out pretty good. I'm not sure I'm gonna buy anything else, unless iFootage really does come up with a head that just fits that perfectly. And I'm not sure that they're gonna do that just for me, but it'd be nice if they did. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't done so already, I'd love it if you hit that subscribe button. I hope you have some time in your day to get outside, challenge your imagination, challenge your creativity, and just have a fun time with your day. We'll see you for the next one. Oh, and this thing, I just took a bad step doing some yard work and twisted it. Hopefully this won't be on for more than a week or so.